Well, joining us now from Jerusalem is Mark Ragev, the spokesman for the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mr. Ragev, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Now, we've been hearing My how pleasure. Hamas have been declaring the ceasefire a victory. Does Israel consider the ceasefire a victory? It, it all depends how this works out. Uh, the Hamas movement committed to, today to nonviolence, to end all rockets being shot at Israeli cities, to end uh, terror tunnel attacks on our people, sending death squads across the border to try to kill Israeli civilians. If that finishes, for us, uh, that's achieving our goals, because our goals were to protect our people. And if this agreement means there won't be attacks from Gaza, well, that's a good thing. Well, you've certainly managed to weaken Hamas militarily, but you had a lot of other goals. It was to defeat Hamas, to demilitarize Gaza. You haven't achieved that. You've lost the solidarity of many of your allies in the West. And now Hamas and Fatah are closer possibly than they've been for years. What did Israel actually get out of these 50 days of, of fighting? Well, our goal was defensive. Our goal, as I just said, was to protect our people. And uh, this agreement, if Hamas in fact does honor it, will mean that there won't be attacks anymore on Israeli civilians on Israel from Gaza. That's a good thing. On the issue that you raise of demilitarization, this is not just an Israeli uh, 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 policy. The Europeans, the Americans, many others have endorsed the idea that Gaza should be demilitarized. And that's very important. It's a signed Palestinian commitment. It's time that commitment was implemented. Uh, we don't want to have another Gaza war a year from now or two years from now. It's, it's crucial that we move towards demilitarizing well, the Gaza but Strip. There is a meeting now due to take place uh, in about a month's time uh, in Cairo. And obviously a lot of the issues that perhaps both sides would want to be addressed should be addressed now. Is Israel given any guarantees that it will take seriously issues like an airport or a seaport or lifting the blockade? Let's be clear. The restrictions that were placed on Gaza were a function of the hostility of Gaza towards Israel. I mean, the leadership in Gaza, Hamas can't say with a straight face that they believe Israel should have a more normal relationship sure, with them. Sure, but, but looking ahead, sir, into for, my country. forgive me, sure, okay, but the rockets with the ceasefire hopefully are not going to uh, start again. So in that meeting in a month's time, are there guarantees? I mean, is Israel open to having a, an airport and a seaport and many of the other requests that, uh, that Hamas has for Gaza? In the framework of nonviolence, of a cessation of all attacks from Gaza into Israel, of course we can move forward to easing the restrictions and easing the sanctions. They were only put there in the first place as a response to the violence. If the violence is no longer there, we can, of course, move forward and ease restrictions. We never saw the people of Gaza as our enemy. Our enemy was those Hamas and other terrorists who were shooting rockets trying to kill our people. Um, you mentioned that there's question marks whether you think Hamas will stick to the ceasefire. But what about Netanyahu? Can he deliver on all of this considering how much opposition there was in his cabinet internally within Israel? Well, we're allowed to be a bit skeptical in Israel because there have been 11 ceasefire proposals on the table that Hamas either rejected or violated. And I'm hopeful that this time they will in fact honor the ceasefire. That's good for Israel. It's good for the people of Gaza who were, as you just reported, celebrating the ceasefire. This conflict in many ways could have been avoided or a lot shorter. The same proposal do you think, Mr. Netanyahu, that was accepted do you today think, by Hamas. Do you think Mr. Netanyahu wishes that it had been avoided? Do you think he's been damaged by this internally in Israel? I know unequivocally that Prime Minister Netanyahu and the Israeli cabinet accepted uh, this, the, the Egyptian framework on July 15th. Hamas at the time rejected it, but just think for a moment. Had Hamas accepted what it accepted today on July 15th when we accepted the Egyptian proposals, how much of this bloodshed, how much of this suffering could have been avoided? Mark Ragev, live for us in Jerusalem. Thank you for your time. My pleasure.